different facets to each of your talents, and now you're also authors. How did you come up with the initial idea behind a case of the Zaps, and what can readers expect from it? Amazing. Um, I guess I'll answer. Um, we we had the idea years ago, actually, for the book. In um, it was like a book, like a souvenir shop in one of the stores in Central Park. Actually, it's so random, but it's very specific, and I remember it, which means it must be an important memory. But um, we were just like looking at a bunch of children's book books and the idea sort of just like popped into my head. And I remember immediately mentioning it to April and we both were like, oh, that that sounds fun. That sounds good. And then it kind of just got shelved um, until, you know, the pandemic and the whole world shut down and everyone was sort of looking for ways to do things, I think. Yeah, it got shelved because we were also like, I don't know how to write a children's book. Right. Anyway. <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> that too. A case at the Zaps creates conversations about anxiety in a really digestible way. Was that a challenge to kind of toe that line and how did this set of characters allow you to strike that balance? Well, we had a, we did have outside help, which was really, really <laughs> awesome from the Child Mind Institute. Mm -hmm. So um, I have some experience working in the mental health space. Alex has done some things for Child Mind Institute in the past. So we wrote the book to the best of our ability, but we are not therapists and we are not doctors and we wanted to be very, very careful about mm -hmm. how we were talking about these things. Um, little like tiny little slight changes in words can really affect a kid. Um, so we had the Child Mind Institute consult on the book and they were able to tell us what was appropriate language, what little changes and tweaks we can make. So like, you know, some words might evoke feelings of shame, some vote like, and we would never really think of that in our adult brains, um, but they were able to kind of guide us through the whole process, which was, uh, we were so, so grateful for, and really honestly couldn't have done this without them. And there's so many fantastic illustrations in this book. What was that collaboration like working with James as you brought this story to life? I. I absolutely love talking about this um, for a few reasons, but the number one being that I think a lot of people, including us, before we started this process, sort of had have no idea how this kind of thing works. And so the way that it happened was, you know, we wrote the whole book, the book, you know, the book got picked up by Abrams, the publishers. We wrote the whole book. We were working with our amazing editor, um, Emily DeLuga. And when kind of once the book is like mostly locked, that's when you start talking about illustrations right and this this is obviously specific to you know a lot of kids books will be like written and illustrated by a person but that was not us in this case um so it was really cool emily basically showed us a handful of um artists who emily thought that like we would maybe feel fits the kind of universe we were looking for so it was sort of this like strange like <laughs> silent auditioning process where we were like going through all these artists websites and they were all awesome for like totally different reasons, but we saw James's work and April and I like instantaneously agreed that something about the way that he captured um, characters just felt, it felt very right to us. Um, we always say that, you know, we were looking for something that was like, just like a little bit off center, right? Like something that was like a little bit weird or had a little bit of a quirk or a little bit of a character, like char special character to it. And James was exactly that um and then as far as the collaboration process goes again this is something that we had no idea we as the authors don't communicate with the illustrator there's no like you know i thought like once we picked the illustrator we'd like sit down we'd have a zoom <laughs> call we'd like chat and that's just not part of it and that's kind of amazing and you know now i sort of understand why that's the case and you know it's sort of to protect everybody involved right like the editor is the the middle person in between so like we would say this is what we're looking for kind of on this page and then the you know editor is in the middle and then messages that to the illustrator and then the illustrator draws it it goes back and then it goes back and you know it's really exciting for us because we just get an email one day that says hi james has drawn the whole book and you're like whoa like and so you get to see it and it was a really exciting moment for us um and yeah, it's, it's, you know, we're used to working in spaces where collaborating is like instantaneous, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and that's just not what this is. Yeah, but it was awesome. Like we love James and we could not be 
more happy with what he came up with. And even though we weren't in constant communication with him, we kind of just feel like we were connected on like <laughs> our brain waves were connected. So when we saw the illustrations, it just felt right. It felt like what was in our head, but better. Yeah, it was, it was cool. He was a mind reader and and all we <laughs> we met him for the first time at the book launch event a week ago. Like we had not met like the, the running joke with the two of us was like, Oh God, I hope we hope James thinks we're cool. Yeah. Like, like it's all on it. <laughs> Well, that's amazing. You know, something that I didn't expect from this book was how much humor you were both able to incorporate into it, which I think makes it really fun for parents to share with their kids. Was that something that was really important to the both of you as you were writing this book? And why do you think comedy lends itself to this type of storytelling? Yeah, it was something that we definitely wanted to incorporate from the beginning. First of all, conversations about mental health are scary and kind of big so we wanted to show that there can be levity in these moments um and not every conversation even though you do have to be brave sometimes to have these conversations has to be this big sullen sad hard thing to do um additionally alex and i kind of wanted our book to feel like the books we liked as kids um like we really both like the stinky cheese man book, which is super funny. So we wanted to incorporate some humor into the book. And then also I work with an organization called the Story Pirates um, that we're a kids writing program essentially. And we always find in our work that like humor is a great way into having so many different con kinds of conversations and kids. And uh, we wanted the, the kid to find it funny. We wanted the parent who's reading the book to find it funny. There's like some little jokes just probably for adults that yeah. adults will get. Um, but we wanted everyone to kind of have like a good time reading it together. So yeah, the humor was kind of incorporated always from the start. You both have touched upon this a little bit already in, in this interview. As it, as you were putting together this, this project, what was the most surprising part of the experience? Did you learn anything new about each other during this process? Ooh, that's a fun one. Um, I think that it, it's, it's interesting. April and I have very different ways of, we have very different ways of working, I think, in terms of like communication styles. You know, like we're, for those of you watching or reading or however you're being presented this interview we're getting we're literally getting married to each other so um you know it's fun and really special to work with someone who you know so well in a capacity like this like april and i have gotten to work together on things before but i think this was the most like i don't know what, what's the word you would use for it like the most like like we made yeah together. like from the ground yeah. up you know what i mean and so um it, it was really cool to just see how we each work you know i i feel like my mind is more like i don't know like direct and like i s found myself being the one who was answering the emails really quickly and like sort of decisively but then as we're writing the book april's the one being like you you have like five sentences in there that don't need to be there delete those and i'd be like oh you're right you know what i mean so there were like our strengths um showed themselves pretty quickly and it was it was just fun to um do that together do you know what i mean i mean yeah. i um i i i think a lot about for whatever reason uh trey parker and matt stone the south park guys also the book of mormon guys and they always talk about how trey is very good at being really creative like he's always the one who seems to be like writing the episodes and doing the things and matt's always the one who's like being the business guy and putting out the fires and all of that. And while I don't feel like we are as sequestered as that, it sort of felt like that a little bit to I? me. You're the Trey, I'm the Matt. Um, <laughs> I'm great. I'm fine with being the Trey. Yeah, I know. I know. It just sort of felt like that, right? Like um, I felt a little bit more like the structure person and April felt a little bit more like the content person. Did you, did you feel that? Um, yeah, I also have a little bit more writing experience than Alex. Yeah. So when we were writing it, um, Alex would, you know, like I, I would be able to kind of like look at what are like a clump of ideas essentially, and then like take out what I thought would work and then kind of put it into the story in a way that I think made the most sense. Yeah. Um, but we were like, but it's, it's funny because when you're with someone, Alex and I have known each other for like what, 13, 14 years. A and while, we've yeah. been together for as a couple for 10 years. Um, 
not, you don't always work well with the person you're in a relationship mm-hmm. with. And I feel really lucky. And like, it's a very rare thing that we are actually great collaborators on top of being like, you know, in each other's lives as a couple. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And um, it's really cool to be able to do these yeah. things with him. And it's a totally different kind of co- like collaboration, right? Like yeah. I, quickly found like, oh, I work differently with April than I work differently with other people I work on things with, which is just cool and interesting. And um, yeah, I second all of that. It's it's great. It's probably outside of the content of the book and the help it may offer families. I think it's the thing I'm most proud of with the book is that like we as a couple got to make something together. Mm, Beautifully said. This is a question for the both of you, but April, I know that you've said in previous interviews how much it's meant to you and your family to have a book that you've created on a library shelf. Can you both take us back to that moment when you uh, received a physical copy of your book and what you felt during that uh, time? Yeah, oh my gosh. Well, I always liked writing. I was always making up stories and I was a big library kid and my mom always said she wants she's like you're gonna be an author and I ended up being an actor so I was like not really and then at the book launch event my mom was like I knew you were gonna be an author so it's been it's a very special moment and the moment that we got the book was like I wish we filmed it honestly but we didn't (laughs) it was so like surreal because obviously for two years almost we're working on writing a book and then when we opened the package i think we were both like oh it's a book well, like <laughs> also to be clear too like when april says we've been working on it for two years like we stopped writing it like a year and a half ago you know what i mean yeah. like the writing of the book and finishing it and saying we're done is like it's it's funny it's very different than like the other mediums we've worked in where like if you're doing i don't know like let's say you're doing like a new musical and the writers are changing the pages while you're performing or something sometimes until the show's like open in this case it's like no the right the the book's done before anything else happens so like yeah it's like you get this book and you're like oh right we there was like a purpose to all that work we did so long ago (laughs) and like the the thing that a lot of people keep saying to us and we had this experience too is like oh it's like a, an actual thing yeah. like yeah it's like, a real book yeah we're it's like, a, yeah, it's a we're real like book. yeah like and that's the experience i had too where it's like there's really nothing quite like actually holding it your name's printed on it i mean it's like here it is it's like look at this thing it's a book it's a whole thing it's like, <laughs> it's like you open it and it has pages and it's and i know that that sounds so silly but like it's the same feeling i get i know we wrote a picture book for kids and people send pictures and videos of their kid reading the book. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, a kid's reading my book, which is like <laughs> the, the point of the thing. It's just so surreal to like kind of, you know, we really had an idea in our heads in that Central Park gift shop seven years ago. And now like we're sitting there with like a physical copy of the book. It, it's There's no other way to describe it than just like totally surreal. Yeah. What would you say is the the biggest lesson that you learned during this process that you'll now be able to apply to the different areas of your talent? Mm. Oh, you know, I really have to say um, the children's book space is wildly kind, like not nice, kind, you know, there's like a different, like nice is nice can mean anything like nice can be fake, but kindness is like very real. You know what I mean? Um, And just everybody from in every department and every like corner of this is just kind um and we keep being blown away by it like it just it's so weird it feels like an art form that like genuinely just exists to be delightful do you know Mm. what i mean like yeah and i think i would love to like bring that not even to just other professional experiences but like all of all experiences you know like the word no is never said in a way that's like no because your idea is bad right it's never presented that way it's always presented in like no because like no awesome but no because and there's always like a very good reason for it it feels like it has felt like such an egoless process do you know what i mean where nobody's like Ugh, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm explaining it well. I have nothing but good things to say about all these people. Do you know? Yeah, no, I totally agree. We're just not used to being treated so nice. <laughs> yeah, like, 
um, uh, yeah. where like our ants, like people are very attentive. Everyone um, kind of like leads with their best self and they assume that you are as well. Um, and, you know, I think coming from the theater acting industry, like it's very like they're gonna, your heart's gonna be broken and you're gonna be rejected and they're gonna mm. chew you up and spit you out. So it's like, we just kind of entered this in the same way because that's how we gotta like walk through space. And it's just been um, lovely to work with everyone at Abrams and everyone has been so like supportive and genuinely kind. And I think that like, I would love to inject some of that into like the projects that we do going forward just like assume everyone's leading with their best self and we'll lead with our best selves as well. Beautifully said. I've got one final question for you. Now that this book is out, do you have the itch to write another book? What's ahead for the two of you? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, it's being, we're talking about it for sure, right? Like it's one of those things where we just had such a good time do it. Like again, only, only good. Like there was like never at any point a part of this that I would say was bad. As I'm saying that, I'm kind of realizing it in real time. Like I'm searching my memory for even a speed bump or like, and there's nothing. It was only good. Um, so we would love to do something more. Um, we've been talking about it. Um, the people at Abrams have been incredibly kind. And I think if I may say so, enjoyed working with us as much as we enjoyed working with them. And it was really, really awesome. So I think we're kind of just waiting for the like perfect idea um because again i feel like in this space particularly obviously the execution needs to be done really well like but i do think that the elevator pitch sort of of a kid's book is sort of the most important thing um and i think like once we find that we've landed on the perfect i can explain to you this book in two sentences and you're gonna think it's you're gonna want to read it then we'll be ready to do it. I, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely interested in in writing another book. Um, we are like we kind of have come into this from we have a lot of other like creative projects and things going on. So in order for us to want to write another book, we really want to like believe in the subject matter or the characters or things like that, because we're not like perfect, like, well, we're professional. No, obje authors, obje like <laughs> we are now objectively professional. But we are not authors, yeah. like um, the type of author who like writes several books a year and this is like the only thing that they do. And so they can like kind of spit out as many as they need to spit out. We're kind of precious about it, which is, I don't know if that's yeah. a good or bad thing, but we're pretty precious about it. So once we have something that we feel um, passionately about, I think that we're going to try to get the ball rolling on a second book. Mm -hmm.